Welcome to Holton's Fix It 101. Today we're going to talk about this. This is my new router table. Now, everyone's seen it in videos and I've had things displayed on the top, so I think today is the time to feature it on the channel, don't you think? Welcome back. Now, there are a lot of improvements that I've actually made on this particular router table and uh, a lot of improvements over the old one. Now, if you want to see uh, a playlist of the old one, I'll post a link just up there. Now, as I said, improvements. There's a big improvement in my dust collection on the back of here and inside the actual router itself. There's a big improvement I've made in the actual router lift that's on here as well. This particular one comes from Jessum. And a huge, I mean a huge improvement on the actual router motor that I have underneath. Now, the old one used to use um, an old route, plunge router attached to a plate, and the plate used to go up and down. This particular one is just, just a motor so there's a lot more precision actually put into this, this particular router um, lift than what there was the old one. But the router, the router itself, the actual motor itself, it run, now this one runs at a higher RPM and it has a lot more wattage to boot as well. It's 2400 R RPM, oh, sorry, 2400 watts um, compared to the 1900 watts I used to have in my old router table. There's a big improvement I've made in the uh, MVR switch on the front here as well. The old one you used to have on the side, but this particular one I have now on the front. The big improvement of that is I now have an emergency stop switch. So if I, anything was to go wrong, hit the, hit the uh, emergency stop switch, off it goes. No problem or anything like that. You, well, I still have the bit collection or bit storage down here and storage for all the tools and everything else and I still have the two big drawers on the bottom for storage of other bits and pieces related to this feather boards and things like that but the biggest you know thing for me is that this one is slightly lower this one I'd be able to push down and I now I can slide it through a lot better so I'll bring you in and we can have a look at the improvements and uh, I'll we'll get some close-ups of all the other bits and pieces and, uh, and I'll see you in a couple of seconds. Right, here we are. Now, sorry about the shakiness and everything else, but I'll bring you in a little bit closer. Um, now, here we've got bit storage. Here, here's all the bit storage and everything else. Now, I've improved the bit storage just on here. Um, I used to have three rows of cutters across the across the board. Now I've got four, and they don't bang into one another. They're quite they're quite good, and that's that's all my quarter bits. Here is all my half inch bits, and they're all stored all in the all in the drawers, all nicely. Obviously, down in this one is all me all my storage for all the spanners and all that sort of thing. So that, that's all kept in there. This one down here is, I keep all my other bits and pieces down in there. As you can see, I've got some, uh, some bits, more bits in those boxes. Those are all like panel raised bits and things like that. Down in, down in the other side, as you can see, there is, I keep all my feather boards and push sticks and all that sort of thing in there. So there's loads and loads of room actually kept in here, no problem whatsoever. And here's the storage, and that's where I keep all the inserts and all that bits and pieces for for the in the spanner for the insert 
here as well. No big deal, it's, but I've got plenty of storage. Now, here's a close-up of that uh, MVR switch. Now, as you can see, it'll have the emergency stop button, so you'll be able to twist that out and it comes out, and you'll be able to press it back in. I've got it pressed in at this moment, because if I want to switch it on or anything like that, then I know that it's not going to accidentally switch on for any particular reason. Now, here is the uh, router lift, as you can see, from the Jessam Tool Company. And it's absolutely brilliant. It's flat right across the top, and it, I can't, can't fault this. Now, here's the rail that you can see across the top there. Now, as you can see, this rail here takes my usual standard motor track that, or, or motor guide that will actually um, be used on my uh, uh, saw bench. And I've also got a guide there to actually put um, more feather boards. So I can have a feather board that actually pushes the, pushes the wood against the fence. Now, one of the big, big improvements in my fence, as you, is just like a standard fence, no problem with that. But I've got this, this guide across the top here for attaching feather boards. But all the fence and everything else, as you can see, is all bound just in the back here. I'll get round the back, it'd be a lot better. It's all bound with nice bits of hardwood and everything else. And they've got the hardwood hold downs for holding it down st straight into a T-track that goes in here. Now, you can see there's all the, all the uh, for electrics, and that goes straight into the back of the unit. And there's the dust collection. Now, that comes all the way back up in that hose, all the way into the top here. Now, the, you, if you saw the old... Uh, video of the old railroad table, you'll, you'll notice that, that I haven't got the blast gate that I used to have on the old one. Now the theory is that if you got the front of the table here is all closed, then it's not going to draw any air through the back here anyway. So that was my theory of that. And when you want to use the air coming being drawn through here, you open up the front of the router, the, the, the fence. And all of these are controlled, or the, the actual slides on the front are all controlled by these here that allow you to move that back. Now obviously this has all been extended here so I, can't, I don't have to try and get my hand down in there like I do with this one. I've got plenty of space to have my hand back here somewhere and that's a big improvement over the, lot, over the old one. Now, I'll take you around the front and we'll get down into the, the, uh, the nuts and bolts of everything. And now you can see up in there, there's the big motor that comes along with this router table. Absolute beast this router um, motor is. 2400 watts and I can't be happier with it. The way it's performed over the, you can see it's a quite a bit of dust actually on the on the motor there. I, I cannot be any more happy with this, how this has turned out. And you can see the improvements that I've made in the actual dust collection with these big triangle pieces that's in here that allows all the dust to be drawn right into the back there. You can see the back where it goes into the um, hole at the back. That's where it goes out to the uh, dust extractor. Now, if you want to see the dust extractor, I have just posted a video of the dust extractor, and I'll put a link in the uh, in in the video description for that. So there's lots of improvements that I've actually made on this router table over the uh, other version, and it's all got lovely bits of hardwood on the edges and a nice new plastic or um, vinyl top. So, absolutely brilliant. I can't not be happier with this. Right, here we are. I've brought you in so you can actually see how easy it is for putting a router bit into actually into this table. I do not need to reach underneath to actually put the router in there or anything like that. Now, on the top here, I'll get you a photograph of this, but uh, there is a 
a spindle lock button uh, which you make sure with the handle that comes along with all your system and everything else there so you can lock the actual height of the router in place now you make sure that you've got it in the unlock position and you wind up your router there's quite a few quite a few winds and you'll see that the collet is actually now coming above the table just there a bit squeaky unusual right now we have two spanners now you can see that these these spanners have got a little bit of a an angle piece on them you put one into there and one down a minute you make sure your collet is completely switched off or undone as the case may be and you insert your router bit to the height general height that you require it to be you do it up by hand until it's in place and you get your other wrench bring that round and do it up and that is it now it cut, I've taken out the the uh, full one there and I've got one with a nice big hole in here now that being that we work we, work, we wind this down now a bit, a bit squeaky it hasn't been used for a little while and it is quite cold in here today actually you take that out you put in your your and we have a spanner for the actual inserts that's on here as well bring that round okay now you'll be able to adjust this up and down to your required height after you've done that you put it into the lock handle or the spindle lock a hole and you turn that round like that now that is actually locked in position now to prove that fact to you i'm going to put this into the the height adjustment hole and i cannot turn cannot turn this at all so you know that you're locked off with your spindle height of your router cutter now for adjusting the height and everything else and i do have the for anyone ask i do have it unplugged so anyone that says oh you got it still plugged in i have not now for adjusting the height because this is only like a chamfer cutter that i'm actually using on here i can look down over here like that i can put the adjustment handle into the adjustment hole, and we can just adjust that to whatever we want and there is graduations actually on here so you can actually do fine adjustments if you need to now i think that's just about right there so i'll take that out there and i'll put it in the spindle lock hole and we'll lock it off now that's already locked off and it will not move in position right here we are again now i'm going to put a small chamfer on this piece of wood here and uh, we're getting it all sorted i have got my dust collection all hooked up here um, and what i will do is i will mute the uh, volume a little bit so you don't have all the loudness of the volume and i'll bring you back after i've done the routing i have got some hearing protection so off we go And as you can see, it went through that absolutely perfect. Let's get it in focus for you. It went through that absolutely perfect. No problem whatsoever. You can see on the end there as well. Let's get it in focus. All right, here we go. Right. But as you probably heard, it did sort of like ramp up to the right 
um, speed and everything else for this particular railgun and it blasted through. Now I did have a bit of uh, dust collection on there and as you can see there is absolutely no dust left on the top here. There's a few bits and pieces but that's unexpected but you know or expected but I never had any dust on there. Now that comes through from my new uh, router, I'm sorry, my new dust extractor which I, if you want to see, see that I will post a link up there for that as well. That's a recent video and uh, it's absolutely, that's a brilliant machine to have in my workshop too. So there we are, there's my new router table and I cannot be happy with it. The way it's turned out and the, the quality that I've tried to achieve with this. Now, if you want to see the old um, router table that I used to have, I will post a link down below for so you can watch that. There is a whole series. I'll put the playlist in the link so you can watch those if you need to. But I cannot be happier with the way that this particular one is turned out. Now, if you want to contact me on the usual social media channels, they are coming across here. Here we go. And in any of those channels, you can contact me on and I will try and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And please click on the like button and there's a subscribe button as well. Please click those links and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.